Hi, this is Darwin from Helia, and I am here to show you how to configure PFSense to limit web and email uh, to untrusted devices. So basically, that means that uh, devices that you don't trust, someone connecting to your network, uh, they're not going to be able to browse or check their email. And devices that you do know about, uh, they can have full access. Now, this is a scorched earth policy, and what that means is uh, if it, it blocks everything. Now, if uh, you want more uh, control and say, you know, I want to block social networking, or I want to block Facebook, or uh, tighter control over that, uh, that is not this. We're going to do a different video about that, and uh, we're going to be using OpenDNS. So let's get right to it here. Uh, this is PFSense. You'll notice here my configuration. I'm using 10.20.0.1 as my network. So all of my uh, uh, computer IP addresses I use are going to be in that range. So let's go to the firewall and aliases. And... Uh, Looks like I have something left over, but I'm going to add one in for my P, uh, my 3CX uh, phone system. Now this can be any other phone system. It can also be uh, a server. It says here that the uh, alias must have letters and numbers and an underscore. It doesn't say anything about spaces. You cannot have a space in this, and that's why I'm using underscore here. Now, with my uh, phone systems, I always put it on uh, .10. It's just a convention that I use. Again, this can be any phone system uh, or, or server, and you might put multiple addresses in here. So we're going to save that one. The next one we're going to do is a trusted computer. Now, this is uh, a little bit different with trusted computers. What I need to do is first reliably know what IP address my trust computers are on. So the way we're going to do that is by going to DHCP leases and uh, you'll see my computer here uh, dot 100. Uh, I'm going to add a static or a reserved address of this and for this one it's 10.20.0.50 and then so for any other computer that you're uh, that's trusted that you know about that you want to give full access to you would also give it a static mapping here and so we're just going to go and click save and uh, so I can apply changes for that as well and if we go to services and DHCP you'll see at the bottom of the list I've now have a, a static IP address of dot 50 okay so now that we have that we're going to go down to uh, aliases and we're going to create a new group called trusted computers or trusted devices. Okay, so uh, we're going to add uh, that IP address that we just put in here. 10.20.0.50 and this is uh, Darwin's computer. Okay, now if uh, normally we'd have a lot more trusted computers and we just add the IP addresses in here. Okay, so we're going to click save on that. Now that we have uh, a trusted device, you know, the other thing that you'd be able to do, which might be a little bit easier, is uh, you can put a network address in here. So a, a range of uh, addresses that we trust. Uh, so let's go and apply this. Now, one of the, uh, with this method here, it's a little bit easy to bypass because you could, uh, you could take over this, I, this IP address. There would be an IP conflict and it might not work very well. But if you want to hack through it, they'd be able to do that by just reassigning or, or assigning their device one of these addresses. Now, a better way to do it would be with VLANs and physical port uh, security on your switches, and we'll do that in another video as well. This, this is pretty good though. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is go down to rules, and we are going to make sure we're on the LAN side here, and we're going to add a rule for pass, and any 
traffic from 3CX phone system. We're going to allow and then also uh, we're going to allow any traffic from our trusted devices. Okay, so we're going to save that. Uh, now here comes a bit of a trick. We're going to start denying everything else. So we're going to block. Uh, for the first one, we're going to block HTTP access, which is web browsing access. And then we're going to add another one for HTTPS. So again, block TCP. It's always TCP for these uh, these things. And then we're going to go HT, which is encrypted uh, traffic for Facebook or YouTube or Google. And we're, I'm going to pause uh, this uh, and add a few more rules in. Okay, so we've got a bunch of new addresses here, or uh, port numbers uh, for inbound and outbound. Uh, one of the things you want to do is take the trusted and the 3CX uh, phone system rules and put them near at the top. These rules are executed in order from top to bottom. So what happens is when there's a, a request that goes out, it sees if it's from a trusted device or for 3CX phone system. And uh, when it does, it passes those. If it's not from one of those devices, it then checks the ports on these. And if it's any of the web browsing or mail, it's going to block that traffic. If it's anything else, uh, then it goes through here. And uh, so it might be the NTP, it might be DNS. NTP is the time server for synchronization. DNS is for directory uh, DNS lookups. And there's a lot of other services that computers rely on. And we're going to allow all that traffic through just so things uh, continue to work properly. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Uh, just a matter of testing now, and off you go. Thanks for watching. We do have a a great operations uh, center for our uh, commercial customers to fix things. If you want us to do this for for you, please let uh, let us know. Uh, otherwise, visit us on the web at itsupportcalgary.ca. That's it-support-calgary.ca or office-phone-systems.ca. Thanks for visiting us. Mm -hmm.